Omnisphere can be very demanding on your CPU, particularly when you're working in multi-mode. Now we've looked at using the sample thinning options in the browser, but there are some system settings here that we can use to optimize performance. Now, the first thing is the sample memory. It allows you to manually limit the amount of virtual memory that Omnisphere is going to use. So we can click here and choose between different amounts and no limit on sample memory or process limit is fine. Or you can set a fixed amount. And you'll notice that when I change this, this slider here is going to change. Right now I have a multi loaded in with I think six of the parts filled up. And you can see here when I set a 1.25 gigabyte limit that it's used this amount and has this amount available and this will change. Of course, the available amount will change as I go up. And then if I go to no limit, it's what's available on my system. Now there's two modes of managing all the samples, streaming or not streaming. And when it's streamed, what it means is that samples stay on the hard drive and they're read from the hard drive rather than being loaded into RAM. So it allows you to override the limitations of the physical RAM that you have on your computer. And on modern fast computers, it's generally a good idea to leave streaming on. Now we have preload memory size. This is the default value. It determines how much memory is going to be devoted to preloading samples. Now when you're streaming, the idea is that just some of the samples are loaded in, maybe the initial attack portions of the samples, or it's just some of the velocity ranges. Some of them are loaded in and some are read. So this determines how much are going to be loaded in. The higher this is, the more of your physical RAM you're using. This is generally a good value. Now the number bytes per read determines the size of each read of sample data. So when Omnisphere is going to start reading samples from your hard drive, this determines it's kind of like a buffer size, how much it's going to be reading at a time. Now we have a lock memory that we can turn on or off, and we get prompted with that when it's off, it's a good idea to leave it on. It determines if the RAM is dedicated to holding the preload memory. And you want that, because if not, you're gonna get some crackling. We have stream read ahead over here. And this switch increases the low level disk read ahead. So fewer physical disk head movements are needed to perform all the read actions. So it's kind of tied into the number of bytes per read. This is good to leave on as well. And we have the streaming break, and this is probably the second most important parameter here next to the preload memory size, most important in terms of performance. So what this does is it balances system resources between streaming and other operations. And generally, this is a good value right around 0.1. Now we have a display here with three numbers. Now the number on the left shows the number of streams in progress, and then this is the number of notes that are in progress, and then finally the number of samples that are preloaded. So when I hit a note on my keyboard, you can see if any streaming is in progress and the number of notes that are used. So because there's an arpeggiator and a delay line there, just holding one note uses many voices. And there's streaming involved. Now we have master tuning here, which is fairly self-explanatory. It tunes the entire instrument, and you can choose between a bunch of different values. And we have some miscellaneous controls here that affect how the interface works. Switch to layer upon activation. What that means is when we're in a part here, let's say this one, for example, that uses two layers. When we're in one of the layers and we activate the button and deactivate it, it's going to switch to that layer. So for example, if I turn on layer B, it switches to layer B. If I turn on layer A, it switches to layer A. And that's due to the switch to layer upon activation button. Sync tab panes together means that when you're switching between these different parts, any of the open windows, like for example, the effects, they'll remain in sync when I'm switching between the parts due to this sync tab panes together being on. Now round robin affects the behavior of round robin samples when there are multiple samples per note and velocity. They can be played back in order or in random or random, making sure you go through the full order before anything is repeated or sequentially, or no variation at all. When you launch Omnisphere, we can determine what is going to come up, the main page, the orb, or the edit page. And when we're in the file browser, we can determine what the startup directory is going to be. That's the default, but you can choose any of these. And finally, accept OmniTR connections when you're using an iPad and connecting. This will allow you to connect. Now, this is interesting, the modulation section. In the modulation matrix, we have wheel, aftertouch, pitch band, breath control. Those are all standard modulation sources. But what you can do here is remap them if you want to use something else like 
just click there, go move MIDI controller, move your controller assignment, and it'll be remapped. So when you're in the matrix, you can use the modulation wheel as the source, but this will have it then access some other MIDI continuous controller message. And it's great for, let's say you have a breath controller and you want it to control all the assignments that are used on the mod wheel in the modulation matrix. You can just reassign over here by going move MIDI controller, blowing into your breath controller, and then automatically all the modulation wheel assignments will be able to be controlled by your breath controller. So this is Eli Kranzberg signing out. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. This is a fantastic update, and I'm really excited about this plugin. I've had a lot of fun putting these videos together. I hope you've picked up some ideas on how to get the most out of it. Have fun with it. Make great music. It's a really great creative tool, particularly when you bring in your own user audio and use some of the synthesis engine parameters on it. So experiment, go crazy, be creative, and God bless.